So the first few video we talk about polymorphism, dynamic binding, upcasting and downcasting. So we don't have a chance to get together in the class. So that's why here in my peer talk. So I want you to do that by yourself to think about again, instead of to read from the lecture, can you explain to yourself what is the polymorphism? So use your own words to explain the polymorphism, down, polymorphism, dynamic binding, and the downcasting, and give the example for yourself. So not only practice on this, sometimes if you guys doesn't know what you want to put in the discussion, so then that's you can really using this one to um, using your own word and give the example. So that's we kind of wrap up for the these three topic. So the next one I will continue to talk about the array list. So we talk about array in Java. Then here you using the array. Remember in the assignment six, uh, assignment five. So you add the student. So then if the student, you add student to the course, if the student list capacity is not enough, so then you need to enlarge the array. You need to copy over the data, then we create the array. So those kind of array we introduced earlier, those array, they are fixed capacity. Once you declare the array object, the capacity is fixed. So even you don't have enough space, you cannot enlarge that. But here in Java, we also have another class we call a array list. So a array list object is you can use to store a list of object. And the most important thing is the object is automatically resized. So you see here, before we using array to create and store the object. But once the array is created, the size or we say the capacity is fixed. The size and capacity is fixed. Then Java now we have array list. They work very similar to array. But one thing is they can store unlimited number of objects. That means the size can be enlarged. Even you want to shrink, you can do that. So you can add or remove any object without worry about the size, or we should say capacity. Remove an object by providing the index, and also a array list still allows you to using the index to find the object in the array. So that's a array list. So here is UML diagram for the array list. So you can see array list actually we will talk about that. That's a generic data type. So array list. After using this object name, the class name, then you have the angle bracket to specify your data type. Then you have the constructor for array list. You just create an empty list. So if you want to add an object, you just add and pass in the, param uh, pass in the object reference. And also, if you do this where you just add an object reference, they will just add this object at the end of the array list. But also you can have add an object to the array list and also you tell them where in the index you want to add in. Then you have clear. That's mean clear everything in the array list. Then you have contents. Because you have so many objects in the array list, right? So you can pass in an object to see do you contain this object in the array list or not. So that's why the return type is bullet. Then you can give them the index value. You see here, be careful. In the array list, you get, then you pass in the index value in the parentheses as the argument in the method. So then they will return you that object. Or you can pass in the object, they will tell you the index for that object located in where in the array list. You can check if your array list is empty. You can remove a specific object. You can know the size. Uh, so that's why I want you to distinguish about the size and the capacity. 
So size, that means so far how many objects I have in my array list. And also you can remove specific object using the index. So that's the array list. From now on, actually, we will have many classes we want to introduce you from Java. Then when we introduce you a new class being developed in Java compiler, then we will show you a UML diagram. Uh, so you will see here your UML diagram. They give you the location for where this class is. So they are under java.util.arraylist. So then we will show you, see that's all the public interface we have. So you can check on uh, the method signature and the return type. So earlier you see a release to we have the E in the angle bracket. This one means there is a generic class for the generic type. That means this E can be replaced with any concrete type. So the concrete type that's me, the class type. So here we see for example how we will create an array list. So now I want to create an array list. The data type is string. So I call the array list is cities. So they will have the cities array list including all different city names. So when you do the declaration, you just see array list is the class name, angle bracket, including the data type. Then you give them the object reference name. So after you're done here, you only declare an array list variable called cities. So this variable will refer to a string array list. So you only create the reference, right? So right now, you need to continue. So that's why here, new, you create the array list object. So this array list object is, this array list will contain string in each data. Then we're using the default constructor to create an empty string array list. Yeah, so here is the example how you create an array list. The data type is string. Then remember we learned about the dates, the date object, right? So I also can create an array list is the date. So then you see here, uh, if you didn't include a library, so you see the object type you can use in the package net on uh, java.util.date. So that's the whole thing also is the data type. So then you have array list date. Uh, so then the dates actually is a list object reference. So they will refer to a new date array list. So that's how to create a array list with different data type. So we show you the syntax, but now here that's really create an array list. So here we will have a cities list. That's array list data type is string. So then you see here, you can add the different city name. So you're just using the array list to reference name, invoke the add, the add method. So you're passing the object. So the object is according to here, your array list is string data type, right? So then you will add London, Denver, Paris, Miami, Seoul, Tokyo. So they are city name. So they are all string. So actually they just add one by one. So then you will see when you just using the add, they just add the new object to the end of the array list. So then you can see, you can get what the size now. So you see we add one, two, three, four, five, six, six CD. So then they will display the size now is six. So if you want to check any CD is in the list or not, so that's earlier we say we use the contents. So you have the Miami is the city name. So then if you want to know the index of which index is the Denver. So you just do the dot index of. So they will return you the index. So then you can try to run this program. So see you have different methods we use. And we check the 
add contents in that of and empty. So then at the end, you see you can use in the add, but this time we can add to the location. So we have a new city add. So when you're using the index, uh, so index in the array list is the same as array. We start from zero. So here is two. That means the new city we will add at the index two. So that's why earlier we have London, Denver. That's zero, one. We have Paris. But now since the new city you want to add at two, right? So then this add is kind of is insert. They make this new city location is at two. Then the rest of that, they just move one more to the next of that. So that's why compared to earlier, we have six city. The new city actually adds in the location two. So now then they are being changed the content. So then if we want to remove, you can just give them the object name. So object content. So give them the object, they will remove the Miami. Or you can give them the index. So that's why one is Denver. So we remove the Denver. So here actually, see, uh, a release is came from object as well. So when you're using the two string, they will display the format like this. They were using a square bracket, then display the content. And also you see since we know the size, right? We also can using the get index to return the object from the array list. So array list here we give you the example using a string. Then at the end you see you even can add the circle as a data type for the array list. Also that's the two example. So of course you have the output like this. But the most important thing, please run this example in your IDE. Okay, so this one is actually is our array list example. Okay, so please make sure you will run the program. And after you can run, try to modify that to see your output. So make sure you run the program and you modify and check the result so that's the first time you see array list then we show you the string type and the circle type right so then if you want you can add more to see how they working so then later you can follow by this example late the next video we will talk about some static method from the array list so then you can run at the end so make sure you run this program from the IDE